Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Liberty Challenge, and today we have Tarzan and Jane, and yesterday I said, yeah, this couldn't possibly be the one between Tarzan and Tarzan 2. I was wrong. This is literally the first direct video sequel to the original Disney Tarzan from 1999, I believe. This is from 2002. It's an hour and 18 minutes long. And yeah, it is definitely direct-to-video kind of thing. It's it's part of that era of cashing in where they're like, hey, let's look at all of our properties, let's start making movies, and you know, a sequel to The Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast or just Mulan and everything. And to varying degrees, they sucked. Uh, and other <laughs> other very the other end of the spectrum, there were some that were actually pretty good. They they are not on the same level of animation as the features, and that's understandable. That's not the way it works when you're going direct to video. You don't have the same budget. You don't necessarily, although it sounds an awful lot like it, you don't necessarily have Phil Collins doing the music. And there is one sequence at the very beginning that sounds like, it, it, maybe it is Phil Collins, I don't know. I can't tell. I didn't check, but it was, it, it was close. And um, yeah. They couldn't even get the cast back. Uh, pretty much everybody in the original cast. Uh, Minnie Driver, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, just uh, Wayne Knight, even. You know, the guy from Seinfeld and Jurassic Park. No, nobody came back. This is literally uh, an entire 100%, as far as I can tell, replacement of the cast. Michael T. Weiss plays Spider uh, Spider-Man. Tarzan. Sp Sp Spider-Man? Why would I even think Spider-Man? Why did that come off the... That doesn't make sense. Anyway, Olivia Diabo uh, steps in for Minnie Driver as Jane, uh, who has kind of... Is, she is kind of the bulk focus of this story. It's It centers around her, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Jeff Bennett plays Professor. Um, we have Jim Cummings as Tantor the Elephant, and replacing o Rosie O'Donnell is April Winchell, who is uh, the, the Turk, the, the gorilla. So, um, yeah, so, and those are the main, you know, the animal sidekicks can talk and everybody understands them for some reason. Or maybe just, maybe just Tarzan does, I don't know. But we understand them. Uh, but everybody's doing their best impression of the actor who played the role before it. Uh, not that these are not accomplished, Jim Cummings and April and everybody else, they're all accomplished uh, voiceover actors, and uh, do do not diminish their their efforts in any way. They did a job, and they got paid for it, and they did great because that's what they do. They are Disney mainstays for a reason. So, yeah, they uh, they took over the roles, and uh, it's a it's a movie, sort of. It's an anthology in a sense. It has three different stories told in flashback that take place prior to the core story in this, and. In the story, it's really about Tarzan and Jane. They're coming up on their first anniversary after getting married. Uh, Tarzan doesn't isn't aware of this. At least, uh, at least that's where we think. Of course, it's all told from Jane's point of view. She uh, confides in the gorilla and the elephant that hey, uh, it's our one year anniversary. What do we do for something special? And they keep reminding her of how things have gone wrong in the past year. Like, a lot has gone on. Like, some people keep visiting the jungle, like, hey, Jane, you never came back. Why is that? Like, her friends show up. And once the first story, her, like, three friends show up from England, and they're like, hey, you're from high society. What are you doing here living in the jungle? You're totally, this is not your thing. We know, we know who you are. Come on, Jane. And... Of course, Jane decides to show them different. It, it, it's it, it, basically the friends kind of remind her the animal. Okay, no, the animal friends, she must understand the animal friends. Yeah, because she's talking to them and she's understanding what they're saying to her. Because they're reminding her that, hey, remember the last time you tried to get uh, maybe dress Tarzan up to be more spe uh, you know, civilized? And then they tell a story about her friends showing up in the jungle somehow getting a a thing, a, tri a, tri a trip to the jungle so they can uh, find Jane and bring her back home. Because that's a thing that you just do. Uh, you know, Tarzan has been missing in the jungle for his entire life and suddenly everybody's just showing up when Jane's gone. 
now. So, and then Jane tries to prove them wrong by saying, hey, this is a really great place to jungle. And of course they run into panthers and and they uh, there's they show that, that Jane's very capable on her own. She doesn't need Tarzan to rescue her while Tarzan is off wondering if she's embarrassed by him and does uh, because she wants him to dress up in a monkey suit in a sense in a in a tuxedo to show how civilized he is when she meets her friends. That kind of relationship kind of hoo-ha basically. Uh, the second story, of course, has to deal a little bit of jealousy when, uh, wait, so what's, what was that story? Oh, not jealousy. Okay, hold on. That's the third story. The second story, some poachers come by. Well, not poachers. They're, they're diamond smugglers. These guys show up and they're, they need to find a way to this lost diamond mine. If, if, if mine. Mine? Oh, what's wrong with me? Uh, <laughs> lost diamond mine. Um. So he, you know, if he, um, who better to take them there than Tarzan, because he knows his way around, and he doesn't know the the value of a diamond, and these guys are just using him. So he takes them there, and of course they're going to betray him at the first chance. But he's been told that the women in uh, in England, where Jane is from, obviously, uh, adore these diamonds are of great value and great beauty, and he would, uh, she would be very enamored by him. She would love it if he gave her a diamond. Yes. So, of course, all sorts of shenanigans happen, all sorts of action takes place. Uh, that one, that story is very focused on Tarzan, of course, but of course, Jane is there also, but everybody's in danger. It's all kind of crazy. The third story has to do with uh, a little bit of jealousy when a royal airman that Jane knew as a child, grew up with, decides to show up in the jungle in his airplane to sweep her off her feet and take her away. Or is he? He might be there for something more. And Jane welcomes him in and says, hey, this is my old friend. Don't you, don't, isn't he great that he's here? And Tarzan gets very jealous. And uh, there's actually some really good action sequences in this. There's some pretty decent humor, some like great delivery in a lot of the lines. Um, I, <laughs> okay, the animation, like I said, is not top notch whatsoever. It's Saturday morning, especially the 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 bracketing story, the 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 thing that starts it off and ends it, and then the interstitials that connects everything. That is very Saturday morning cartoon stuff. But each of the individual stories have a slightly better uh, quality of animation. Uh, less dropped frames. Uh, it's it's much smoother. Uh, some really interesting turns. A lot of it uh, in the interstitial stuff, the, the stuff, the wraparounds. Those feel like somebody traced the first movie and made it very soft and puffy. It it just. I mean, I I don't I can't remember if I've seen the first film completely, uh, but I know the difference between feature animation and direct video TV animation, Saturday morning cartoon animation, they are not on the same level. And again, that's okay. It's because of budget. It doesn't mean that people are any less talented. It's just you, you work with what you got. And yeah, you usually have a shorter turnaround time, I imagine, as well. Um, so yeah, but there's some great uh, movement of the characters in certain scenes, especially when Tarzan is fighting uh, with human or animal. Uh, so it's pretty dynamic. Uh, the humor in this, uh, one of my favorite moments, and this is, I mean, if there's an, any reason to watch this, it's the exchange of when Jane is introducing Tarzan to her three friends. And they're like, oh, this is a nice tree house you live in here. Oh, my parents built it. Oh, where are they? They were killed by the Panthers. And they're like, oh. <laughs> it's like... And he keeps continuing as they go along. Uh, they're in this treehouse. Oh, right over there. Oh, <laughs> and he keeps he keeps building on it. And they're just like, okay, okay, stop. We we get it. That's that's really sad. Let's not push it any further. And of course, at least one of the three uh, girlfriends are, you know, he's such a savage. He's such a monster. Hmm, way to go, Jane. Kind of attitude where she's like. Where, you know, when they're in trouble, she's like, where's that, you know, kind of hunky guy with no clothes, pretty much, 
uh, is he going to show up and help us? Hmm? She's kind of got that uh, really kind of saucy attitude, and it makes it fun. She's, she's, she's uh, the, the the women you would expect them to just be snotty itches, but they're not. They're actually, uh, yeah, yes, they are a little bit snooty, and, but that's expected. You know, oh, how dare you lower yourself to this these these ways? And uh, although you, that spe great specimen of, of, of a man is pretty much a good a good reason to do that, but how do you deal with all this? You know, now, nobody's going to ask her how she takes care of her business. You know, but it's also a hundred years ago at least, and well, that's. We never explained that. I mean, honestly, seriously, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, you meet this hunky dude in the in the jungle, I'm going to tell you this much, as hunky as he is, he smells like crap. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't care how many waterfalls he washes himself under with his long, gorgeous hair, he smells like crap. And there's a reason, because he was never told by the gorillas how to wipe. So, <laughs> it's... That's part of the magic I've just destroyed right there. It's just the way it is. Nobody poops in Disney. Uh, from Universe, whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's not a great, wonderfully recommended film by any means. It's not like, oh my god, you gotta see this. But it's not as bad as I expected it to be. Yes, it's not top-notch. It is not the feature film. It is not uh, a classic by any means. But uh, if you're looking for, if you like the original film and you like a distraction, you want to see more of these characters, and you're not too, like, you know, married to the whole universe, you're not too, like, too intense about slight details or the drop in quality, you might get a kick out of it. There's lots of voices you'll recognize in this, uh, even though it's not, none of the actors from the first film. Yeah, you'll still get a kick out of it, I think. Um, like I said, humor, some of the actions pretty good uh it's i mean the storylines are going to roll out exactly as you expect them to the jealousy plot line is the the guy from her past a good guy what do you think is he really what is he there for come on but there is some uh there's lots of just good action bits throughout this and it's uh they do all right i'm i i, I can't fault them it's it's it's, uh, yeah. Check it out. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 508. Mm -hmm. Don't have to scroll far. 508. Oh, okay. It's been a while since we've had a short, and I don't, I'm not sure which one this is, but we'll find out soon enough. We're going to be watching The Old Mill. All right. So yeah, that's where we're not watching next. Uh, a short called The Old Mill next on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I think it's a silly symphony, maybe. I'm probably wrong. Anyway, bye.